I didn't know if I was playing the bass in that song or not. It sounded <laughs> good. It sounded good. Hey, I'm a good musician. What can I say? <laughs> but today in the Russ Meek Speak Show, I have uh, two sharp individuals that have come in to talk about the world of real estate and a number of other things that you need to know. And this next hour, we're going to give you $100,000 worth of information, and you're not going to pay a dime for this information. So tell me about yourself. Who are you, sir? Lister, thanks for having me as, as always. Uh, Leroy VML, uh, CEO of Mills Realty. And so uh, for uh, some of you who guys have uh, watched this program, you know, we, we try to bring you the best information. And today, we will try to give you as much information as possible that you will need to know. But I am the CEO of Mills Realty and Mills Property Manager. Management. Got it. Uh, and you, sir? Well, I'm here. I'm Peter Streff. I'm with Guaranteed Rate Mortgage Company. Okay. And I do residential lending and commercial lending. And we're going to talk today a little bit about both. Okay, got and it. What's going on in the world. Now, I have uh, two guys from the real estate side. We got an interesting world here. I'm turning around every day. I get prices going up through the roof. I have the Fed trying to decide if it wants to raise rates more. I'm like, hey, you guys need to leave us alone. I got Congress that can't decide who's going to be the House <laughs> chair. And I got people bombing and killing people in Israel. So right now, I got some issues that are all over the place. But right now, what do you think right now? What is happening in this real estate market today? All right. So, um... Maybe we can just get an overview of what's going on because uh, there's there's so much going on right now, yet there's nothing going on. So let's so overall, overall uh, there's a there's a seven percent seven percent seven point one percent seven point seven percent reduction of real estate in the entire industry right now, in the Chicagoland area, like a seven point seven percent reduction right now. So and that's that's due to the fact that there is less inventory mm -hmm. rates are higher so at this point there's less people buying okay but it's also an opportunity to buy yeah because yeah. a lot of people have been placed out of the market so but there's an opportunity to buy but right now overall the market is pretty scarce and there's not a lot of inter inventory so if you have inventory and you're thinking of selling now's a great time to sell now i throw into that one question i keep getting reports you got the highest number of foreclosures here in the chicago land marketplace these days what's happening there well you know what Right, right now, we don't see a lot of foreclosures on the market. I mean, whether whether it's there or not, but we don't. We in the on the ground don't see that. The reason is because it's not coming through the MLS, which you know, which provides all that information. Why is not coming through? Because uh, properties are being snapped up so easily. Okay. So there's still multiple offers on property. I mean, there's still you, you buy a property and uh, or you you make an offer on a property. And there's still five offers. Okay. I've been into a situation where there's 16 offers on one property. So, even with rates today, even with rates today, but that's but that's all due to the scarcity of the property, right? Okay. There's not a lot out there. So I, I tell sellers, hey, if you got some place to go, because it's not like if you if you sell your house, you can find a place right away. I mean, you couldn't find it. You can't find it. You can't find a place, but you got to get into this. You got sometimes you got to fight for it. Got it. Yeah. Now I know yeah. we've talked about different issues. We still got first time home buyers that are trying to get out there in the marketplace. And we have people who are saying, hey, I just want to leave this market alone. I'm afraid of this stuff. I'll just sit back in my apartment and I don't have to deal with it. Well, you, you know, listen, if you stay in your apartment, you got to pay the rent, mm -hmm. right? No matter what, you got to pay the rent. So I tell folks, if you're going to plan, if you plan on buying, buy now. If you can't wait, keep it in mind, Lester, we both been in the, been in the business a long time, 2000 five, six, I mean, you know, uh, when the market was going haywire, and after that the market crashed and then turned around, rates dropped at basically zero, all right? So we have this long history of lower rates, all right? From 2008 through, eight, yeah. through, all right? Mm -hmm. But this is not, this, that's not a norm. So I, I tell, I, I, I advise my client, the norm is not two, two percent. The norm is about six, seven, right? is that correct? I would say in the sixes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, th the that, norm. The norm is a six. So for an interest rate on a thirty-year note, would be in the mid sixes. Yes. Yeah. So don't 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 panic because <coughs> it's a norm. Um, so you go ahead and you still buy your property because you still got to pay rates. So people say, well, I'm going to wait till the rates go down to three percent. Who says it's going to go to three percent? Who says it's going to go back to two? It mm -hmm. may never get there. I'll tell you one day. 
<laughs> One day may get there, but it may never. It, it may uh, it, it be, it be nice, right? But that don't mean they'll get there. So you know. Yeah, it's it's for me. It's all about payment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether the rate's three percent or seven percent, it's whether or not you can afford the property, and it's you and your wife's budget. Right. And that's the that, key. That's the key ingredient for buying a house. Unfortunately, with the rising rates, that didn't slow down the appreciation of the properties because there was unlimited Supply. amount of properties right. available. So at, uh, there was a point in time over the last 18 months where there was six buyers for every house. There's That's still starting, six buyers. Or more, but it's, yeah. starting, it's starting to change. Yeah. I'm seeing that slow down in the marketplace. It could be because of a combination of higher rates, mm -hmm. more properties on the market, more people sitting on the sideline mm -hmm. waiting, so there might be a, 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 a right time to be purchasing here in the next couple of months just because and there's you, more selection. If you can't, I only tell you, you better grab now. We got 1,000 immigrants an hour coming in these days, so hey, we're gonna have that demand. <laughs> that's, gonna, that's gonna be well, a concern down the road too. Yeah. We gotta figure out how to place the, 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 that population. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, as, as a broker on the ground, there's still I just want to reiterate that there's still multiple offers on if, if, a, if a property comes up that's real nice, there's still five, six, eight buyers, ten buyers okay. looking to buy the house. Um, when it's an affordable property. When it's an affor yeah, when it's an affordable. When it, an affordable and to me as a banker is anywhere from 250 to 350 where the husband's earning yeah, a few bucks affordable. and the wife's working too part-time. Got it. Again, yeah. I still had that issue that I put to you last time about Inglewood. I still have properties right now in Inglewood. I couldn't believe it. I opened up. I had a $290,000 property popping of just listed in Inglewood. I'm like, wait a minute. This is crazy. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, Inglewood is still affordable, uh -huh. you know, and um, it's changing. I mean, it's changing slowly. Inglewood, uh, New City, uh, you know, West Inglewood, you know, on the west side, on the west side, it's changing slowly. And people are realizing that value is there. And you gotta, you gotta rate. You know, why stay at home with, at fifteen hundred bucks a month? Because I mean, let me tell you, rents. I was on the South Shore a couple of days ago, and a three bedroom is going for twenty one hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. We have rented two three bedrooms for two thousand dollars each, and one I have one that's coming up that's twenty one hundred dollars for a three bedroom. All right, so why would someone want to put in? you know, $2,000 per month on a three-bedroom uh, apartment. Wouldn't it be much easier just to buy a home if, if, if that's the neighborhood you're living in? Right. But we have rented it at $2,000 for a three-bedroom, which those same three bedrooms used to be 1300 bucks and thirteen fifty. And we're a different world. <laughs> we're a different world. Yeah, yeah. we're in a different <laughs> we world. Is right. We are. So I can look at... Um, I mean, the, the fact there's the, the fact that rents are going higher, it's amazing. Um, we should rent, we should do rentals up on the north side for eight hundred bucks for a one bedroom. Now it's eleven hundred bucks for one for for the same one bedroom, okay. right? Yeah, but the rents are going up because everything else is going up. Well, the cost of real estate cost, taxes, taxes are heat, yeah. electric, water, everything throughout the Chicago land area yeah. is going up. They're going to pass it off. To, Pass it off. The landlord, the landlord's got to pass it off to the tenant. Yeah, it's it's the business. It, we don't want to talk about what, what happened to our taxes this year. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's a whole different yeah, story. Another, world. another story. Because everyone is crying, crying the yeah. fact that, or, or, you know, property taxes are literally, you know, two and a half times. Yeah. And our yeah. new uh, mayor says there will be no property tax increases here in the Chicago land area. Like, okay, we'll see about that. Well, well that's because they whacked us up. <laughs> Pretty high. Everybody went up probably about 30%. Yeah. Uh, you know, and more. You know, in some cases more, some more cases but more. On, on average. Yeah, and I still don't believe it know. again. The uh, house that uh, my ex-wife lives in now, the 10,000 square feet property that's valued right now at $2.5 million. Okay. Of course, I gave it to her. The real question of taxes that go through the roof. It Northwestern is. pays no taxes, so everybody well, else has Evanston, to pay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Oh, I, man, if that's Evanston? Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah, you'd be paying 50000 easily for a home up there in taxes. Yeah, that's the craziest. But other it's expensive, expensive taxes in, Evans, in Evanston. But. I heard that you were giving some light to people for new home buyers that can possibly get into their first home. 
What do, what do they have to do to do it? Yeah, here at Guarantee Rate, we have a first-time homebuyer program. I think it's pretty fair, pretty aggressive. It, it allows a, a, a borrower to purchase a property, and they would get a grant. A grant from who? From Fannie Mae. Oh, it's, a, okay. it's a pilot program that we're working with Fannie Mae, and so Guaranteed Rate will also give up to $3,000, so a total of $8,000 for first-time home buyers. Okay, get $8,000. Which would be used for the down payment. Okay, and that's or a grant, costs. meaning I don't have to repay that. Don't have to repay it. Okay, all I have to do is be a first time home buyer. Do I have to have a certain FICO score? Well, of course you have to have a <laughs> certain FICO <laughs> score. But I think you know, on, a case, right? on a case by case, there's no income limits on it. Okay. So it's just a matter of qualifying for the property. So, so bottom line, if I see a house, I got a first rate that's willing to give me up to $8,000 with no money out of my pocket to get this property. Yes. And how long is the process going to take me? Is this like a three-year process I have to go through to get oh, approved? Oh, to get a loan? That takes about 10,000 years. <laughs> no, no. Our typical turn time at my company is about 30 days or less. Okay, so get 30 days? start to finish as long as we have the proper documentation up front. So the bottom line is I can do the first rate mortgage and who do I call? You would call me. What's your number? <laughs> Peter, Peter Streff at Guaranteed Rate, 312-415-0884. Okay, so remember, I got $8,000 on the table here for my first time I, home I purchase. And, and Leroy's got 8000 in the pocket. Uh, oh, so wait, a wait, 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 wait a minute. Help kick in, too. Wait a minute. Yeah, he can call me also. <laughs> oh, so is this going to be a legal deal? I don't have to worry about the feds calling me and saying, look, you came on TV and said, hey, this money that's going here. We, we don't, don't know about that pocket. Okay, yeah, yeah, just, we, just, we don't know about this pocket. This, 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 the pocket now from guaranteed rate. Okay. How long has this process been going on? This is brand new. Okay. This is a brand new pilot program through okay. You heard Mike. it here first. Mm -hmm. Heard it here first. You have heard it here first. Okay. On the residential side of lending. Okay. On the residential side. I think it's a side. very, uh, very mm -hmm. fair product. I think it's worth checking into. Should I be uh, limited to say, get it now while it lasts because it may not be here very soon? <laughs> well, I, I don't know about that time frame, but right now is a good time to yeah, get let's it. check it out. Let's check it out and see if we could do something together. Okay, so bottom line, I need to get, as a new first-time home buyer, I need to call my gentleman here, Leroy, and say, hey, Leroy, give me a house here. I need there to do a first-time home yeah, buyer. Yeah, and if you call me, and uh, I will connect you with the, the Peter. And Leroy, what did they call you? <laughs> they called me at 773-764-9547. So call Leroy to get the house, get the and the first-time home buyer, and then I call my guy here, Peter, to get the money, and then we get this deal done. Get it closed. Got it. You know, I, w I want Peter to uh, touch base on something that, that we talked about earlier with the all uh, the immigrants coming in. That I just man, you can mention the uh, the I-10 program. I mean, just you never know who's uh, well, a well I-10 program yeah. and somebody is not, not not documented, but he's here on a I-10 I number that we have a program that will allow to finance a home with his. But it's twenty percent down. Twenty percent down up to any limit. Well, conforming loan limits are like seven fifty. So no, I'm saying dollar amount. Dollar amount. Yeah. Can I do a million dollar loan on this program, or can I do? Well, a million dollars with twenty five percent down because the maximum loan amount is seven fifty. Okay. The maximum loan amount for a conforming loan today is seven fifty. Okay. Meaning. I could sell that loan in the secondary market. So the same would apply for an ITN borrower. Okay, I just didn't know if there's any limits for the ITN borrower. Not at this juncture, it's just 20% okay. down. Okay. And it's not the conforming interest rates that you hear at 7%. Okay. Probably gonna pay a little bit more of a premium for the rate. Got it. So it just depends on how we put the deal together. But, and just, so, just to clarify, just you know, if, if someone knows an ITN number, is for people who do not have this, this like a social security number where they're paying their taxes. Correct. They're paying taxes to the IRS oh. without an actual social security number, have a job, or whether they work for themselves, whatever that is, yeah. but they can provide <coughs> taxes. For and that. They, they may not be a U.S. citizen yet, but you yeah. have the procedures where you can go ahead and get a house. And get a house, right. Because some Thank people you. think because you don't, have a, you don't have a social security number that you cannot purchase a home. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's, that, and I, that's why I want him to mention that because that, that's uh, important for people to know. 
Yeah, and you can still purchase There's a, a home program either. out there for yeah, that. Yeah, for that. Because we've got a lot of people in right now, more coming in on a daily right. basis. Hey, right. is there any way we could ever have a home? <clears throat> yes, there is. Um, and, and so I, I just wanted to touch uh, before, I, I want people to touch on, uh, on commercial, but I want to touch on the fact that, you know, as, as I, was, uh, I was looking today at uh, different avenues of where, you know, where, or where the market is when it comes to the amount of property on the market. And I, I just happened to, you know, I, I was just kind of reaching out to the car MLS. And I just wanted to kind of just so all people understand the fact that there's not enough property on the market. Um, and that's why the property value sort of have gone up because of the fact that uh, there's a decreased limited supply. Limited supply. Right. So I, 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 just, I took a three portion area of the city and I, and I looked into the loop and the loop has more condominiums than anything else. And uh, year over year, uh, year over year, there was a, I think that like in 2023, 2023, there was like 147 uh, new listings, right? Okay. New listing. But in last year, it was 1,400, right? That's just show the amount of new listing that came on as opposed to last year in the same time last year. Okay. This year is 147, last year it was 1,400. So look at the, the decrease in supply. If I look at West Lawn, there was literally in August, there was actually six new listings last year. It was 40 new listings in West Lawn. Okay. So that's just showing you where how people are, as you that said, just shows the amount of property that's available. It's limited, and that's it's why limited. More right. buyers and, and, looking. And so, so property. And, and I'm gonna just take another part. I'm, I look at Rogers Park. New listing last year. There was 59 new listing for attached single family home. Let's say condos, because Rogers Park has a lot of condos. That's a condo. Last this year is 59 new listing. Last year was 564. Okay. So. The disparage of how how value are in today than where I mean we're in a totally different market different, than different we market. were a couple of years ago. Yeah. So I just kind of look year to year, month over month, and we're like those are the, those are the actual numbers based on or you know or analyst listing. Got it. So it's, it's amazing why you know why property value is a little bit higher. Now, Peter, you got an alternative here for people who are looking for more than just a regular home. You're dealing on the commercial side. What is it that's going to be available for people on the commercial side? And is this a good market for people? Well, Leroy and I have done some commercial financing. That's the stuff outside of the single family, two to four unit type deals, okay. residential, conforming loans, FHA and, and VA lending. And so when commercial could be encompassing a, a, a multifamily, property which is six units or or a courtyard building uh, it could be mixed use property storefront with apartments it could be shopping centers or strip malls that's commercial lending okay. for the conversation the 25 percent downs is a down payment and interest rates on those products are somewhere in the low sevens and they're fixed for five years okay for that type of investment property but i had said leroy and i closed a deal earlier in the year for owner occupied, we went and did an SBA loan, and the daycare, since it was bought in the daycare's name, they were allowed through the SBA to buy that property with 10% down okay. and get a 25 year fixed rate mortgage through the SBA, which is a government entity. Okay, so I can do so, this on a so commercial the, property where I can buy something like a daycare center, bowling put alley, put 10% down. <laughs> And it could actually have a live-in option that could be for me to utilize while building my business. That is correct. Okay. So, and that in our case, that was her second daycare. That was yeah. It so was. that was nice for her to grow, and and basically, I, we, I it was a, a pretty good sized purchase. We did some construction mm -hmm. loan with it, and again, the the benefit was ten percent down. Okay. Daycares. Um, I've done actually three of them this year with 10% down. Okay. Um, See, but I think, I think the, the reason why that's and it's an own, I consider it owner occupied right. because it's her business right. and she's running the show. So. Okay. And just, just kind of clarify a little bit more for, for some of the um, 
some of the uh, entrepreneurs that do have a, a business up and running, they're, you know, uh, they can show all documentation. Instead of keep on renting, they can just get that space through the SBA as long as they're, I think they're, how long have they been? Three years? Three years in business. Three years in business. business. Okay. Three years in business, go show their taxes. Case by case on a uh, startup. Yeah. But that case by case better be a, a stronger buyer with good reserves, okay. yeah. money to cover the time frame that they think they might get set up and start to stabilize. Okay. So, so again, I'll throw out the scenario. We've got commercial option here for people who want to come out, buy the facilities that they're running their business out of. You can utilize, call Peter, mm -hmm. call Leroy, and if it works out, get the property, and if you need, I can give you up to $2 million for your own business as long as the cash flow is showing that you guys can afford the $2 million loan that I'd get to you. So things can work with commercial property. Yeah, and yeah I think that is correct. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is based upon numbers it, it, to yeah. afford that mortgage payment, yes. Right. But for the deals that we had done, him and I, the daycare center was supporting through the revenue stream mm -hmm. that loan request. Mm -hmm. I have now a loan looming where the lawyer is renting and it's costing him 2500 bucks a month rent okay. he could buy that little condo space for three hundred thousand dollars and a mortgage payment will probably mm -hmm. be the same money with 30 percent down yeah. better to buy that would yeah. be better to buy so so i'm saying again every deal is on a case by case but right. where it makes sense yes yes and then uh, just you know we want to structure the the fact that it is important there were, because you now when you get a commercial loan, but you, or you, you go into a commercial space, right? And and they, they they give you four walls. You as the as the uh, as a tenant has to do all the work in that space. I mean, you have to if you, you buy four walls, you got to do everything that's necessary to make that business yours. Right. And and so so it's important that you know that you uh, through S, uh, through SBA too, you can actually go ahead and buy that space and get the money for the rehab. Okay. So you buy four walls and you got to put a, a restaurant in there and you're in the restaurant business 10 years. Why not just, you know, get some money to, to you know, do the build to, out to do the build out. And all that's part of your mortgage. So you buy, you get the property, you get the money, you build your restaurant and you open your business. So you can buy, buy four walls and, and get the money for the build out. So that's sort of important for especially for young entrepreneurs who are growing and they're thinking, well, you know, I need a space that's already there because I've talked to entrepreneurs like, well, I, I need a restaurant, but I, I'm looking for a closed down restaurant. You don't have to be a closed down restaurant. You can build it out yourself. Got it. So stuff like that uh, on the commercial side, uh, when it comes to commercial, you know, I, you know you're going to put your business inside of it. You know, people can look forward to, you know, and because the loans are available. Got it. The dollars are available. Again, that's on the commercial mm -hmm. side. I will also tell you, again, I can give you up to two million bucks with Blair, with Blair Capital. We actually do a sideline for business owners and say, hey, look, if you guys qualify with the cash flow that you're generating through your business, you call Blair Capital, 312-593-2062, and tell them you need the cash. You heard us on here on the Russell Week Speak Show and make this happen. But right now, we need you to get this commercial stuff set up, and we got people like Peter and Leroy that says, hey, let's make this run operational for you and make it work quickly. How long is it gonna take me to get this loan done on the commercial side? Well, on a case by case, it, it could take up to four months, okay? because there was construction it's involved, construction, yeah. and we had to do phase one and phase two on the property, so the daycare took a while, but my other, Financing only took like about 45 days. Okay. So it's just, it, it, again, it's on a case by case. Typical turn times are about 45 days on a SBA loan or a regular commercial loan, buying a multifamily, shopping center, strip malls, Got it. gas stations. Okay. So, Leroy, do you have typical inventory on these commercial type properties? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a, a whole list of commercial that, and it all depends. Commercial is. I mean, Peter talking about phase one, phase two, you know, if you're buying a gas station, you know, some, something like that, you yeah. know, then of course you got uh, the EPA phase one, phase two, the regular multi-unit, you probably, do, you don't need to do that. Well, yeah, but on a, on a six on, flat on, on the South flat. Shore, that would be a normal deal. Normal deal. Take anywhere from four to six weeks tops. Okay. That person would be putting 25% down and he or she would get mm -hmm. seven to seven and a quarter on that rate. 
okay. with 25% down. So uh, so how's the market these days? Is it a tight market these days? Com let me see, for, for commercial, um, commercial is different from residential. I understand. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, it's not some, it's not, you know, you have, uh, I mean, I do both residential and commercial. So I kind of, I, I familiar, familiar myself with both. Um, residential markets always move in a little bit faster than the commercial market. Because commercial markets are, are, are geared to, well, no, I'm saying commercial stores and, and gas stations, hotels, motels, and whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a different group of people. So back to what Peter is saying, back to your questions. Yes, the time frame isn't, isn't sort of in stone. It's, there's a lot of variables that goes on with commercial. And so you, there's never a, you know, if it's a clean deal, I mean, to talk about six weeks. Uh, or four well, to six weeks. I'm just going to say yeah. that commercial real estate, multifamily, multifamily. is yeah. still very strong. People love bricks yeah. and mortar. Okay. So they're going to buy an investment property where the rental income is going to come in every month. Yeah, that's the so strip strong. malls and shopping Jump centers theater. are a little bit tougher because, as you know, we yeah. all know, those industries are taking a hit yeah, yeah they they're are. hard to rent the storefront the mom pas aren't there as much so that asset that we're financing they may look for an anchor tenant anchor which story, could yeah. be a starbucks or you know a true value, true value something that's yeah those are going to be there and weather the storm right. to help out on the on the uh, revenue that's needed to support the loan request so again each deal is going to be looked upon its merits and whether or not it's a makes sense if i Got may it. say yeah you guys have been around the world for a little few years yeah. you, no. uh, you you've been about about 10 six years since you graduated high school <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah thanks i love you too <laughs> yeah. but, i've been but, in this business 35 years 35 years that's a long so time i've been writing loans for, yeah for a long time Gosh. and um I'm only 36 years old. Oh, so of course. Got you get, you get ladies well, right well see, 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 see I, I, I've been about 30 something years too, so I'm, I'm only like 31. So, yeah, so, <laughs> so we both, you know, we both got, we, we both just started, you know what I'm saying? Again, uh, again, these guys have been around for a while. That's my question coming to you guys. I see you as seasoned individuals. What's the crystal ball say about what's going to happen these days, especially on the commercial side? Because I see our market in a kind of a crazy zone here. What's my next five to 10 years to deal with the commercial marketplace? Well, I, I feel good about it. It's just, again, goes down to revenue stream to support the loan request. So if the property sells for 900,000 and you put your 25 or 30% down and it doesn't make money, at some point that will maybe only sell for 850. Mm -hmm. so, but there's a lot of cash on the sidelines right now right. coming from all sorts of cultures, if mm -hmm. I may say, and that they have more than 30% down. Somehow they've been able to save 40 and 50% down. Got and it. that's what's kept the market strong, the cash coming into the market. Got it. So, because I, I deal with the I, business. I, I like the market still, bricks and mortar. Yeah, I deal I with like the it. business owners and I'm hit every day. They're saying, look, we got the Fed who's playing around with rates. We're still thinking maybe a little bit higher. Is, that, higher, is yes. that really going to hit this market? Well, it's going to it's going to have an impact at some point, and then it's going to have to retract. It's going to have to. I, okay. I, I, I I thought that might have happened when rates hit seven mm -hmm. percent with the residential market, but again, supply's not there. Right. So hey, you know, that's so if I have five buy. guys to buy your house, well, somebody will pay. You. It just mm -hmm. it's supply and demand. Yeah. And people um, say, hey, look, the rates will change. We'll refinance. Don't worry about it. Well, there's that attitude. I don't I don't have the crystal ball for that. No. You know, the industry says, all right, Strep, we got to weather the storm. We might see rates as high as eight and a half. And at some point, we're going to see a settling down and they'll get back into the sixes. I mean, I think the but, pundits. You know, is that, is that yeah. at the election? Is it after the election? Mm. Is it another two years from now? Got it. I, I don't know. I got to. We just got to keep plugging along and grinding it out. Yeah, you got to grind it out. And, uh, yeah. and again, I, I deal mean, with my they're, th we're, they're thinking, I, I mean, I would say the projection uh, is, is saying that end of 2024 is when you're going to see that really uh, rates start coming down. A breathing room. A breathing, maybe. yeah. We're really like, okay, we'll lower it. But, that's a uh, possibility. That's again, we have no guarantees. Of, but no, no guarantees, no. Right, right. I deal with my. That's what the uh, economists are saying, I'm going to say. 
I deal right. with my friendly uh, alumni at University of Chicago. We talk about these things about rates. Now we think the actual Fed and everybody else are going to make this happen. Right now, we have no guarantee on Disney, anything. No. And right now, you got to look at the marketplace. I can give you the history, say these are where the trends show it might happen. Yeah. But right now, we're going to need a little time before we see you settle in. And let's that get the correct. elections out of the way. I mean, we think, uh, um, based on uh, the financial market, we, uh, I think I think we're seeing some kind of cooling in, in inflation. I mean, I mean, inflation definitely coming down. So, but rates are not falling behind inflation. You know, I mean, we're thinking, they're thinking, economists are, are projecting from what I'm going to say, quote, unquote, the stock market is thinking end of 2024. That's sort of where we see that from, 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 the, from the economists, the top economists, I'm going to say. Again, just let me interrupt. Mm -hmm. If it's something you can afford, mm -hmm. whether it's 7%, mm -hmm. 7 half or 8 you're getting into a home, and that's yeah. the important thing. That's the key. That's, that's the key, the key yeah. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or a step-up buyer, it's, it's affordability. Right? Well, so, you know what? Yeah, I, I was telling a friend of mine. That's the way I see it. My first, uh, my first home, I, I it was like a, I think I paid ten and a half. I paid eleven point nine. I paid ten and a half on my first home, and I was so thinking, I had a, I have a great deal. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, <laughs> I, and back then, it was, you know, it was coming down from like twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I, when I, I got ten and a half, it's like, oh man, I lucked out. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, so, so eight is still pretty good. I mean, yeah. and I, and I, and I tell uh, my clients a story because. They're thinking eight, eight is bad or seven is bad. No, I, I got ten and a half. We try to educate people, let them know that we're really talking about a variable item. Could be high, could be low. It changes. Don't worry about it. Just look about affordability. Can this work into your budget and right. make things happen? That's that's the main thing. Yeah. And right now, the Federal we were Reserve blessed with three percent money. That was a <coughs> gift. Oh, people, that was that was that a good was time. A gift, you know, and that's <laughs> over with. And, and whether that was good or bad for the economy, I'm, I'm not going down that path. At the end of the day, right. it's whether it's three or seven percent. Again, I can reiterate: it's what the payment is. If it's affordable for you and your wife, that's good. That's that's the way. Again, you can make that's it the way happen. It is. But back to you guys on the residential side, sir. I still got people saying, "Look, I can't find the right house yet. Do I still sit on the bench and wait for this to happen?" What's your recommendation? No, I don't think it's sitting on the sidelines. Because sitting on the sidelines is, is costing you money. It's costing you rent. It's co you're not investing in your home. You're not, I mean, you, you, you can't live the life you want to live. I'm missing out on the potential appreciation. Appreciation of a home. You're missing on a lot of stuff when you decide you're going to sit on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. I mean, even today, I mean, I, I, I still have clients who are trying to get homes you know, who are like, listen, we got to find, we got to find a home. It's, it, so, yes, there's a slowdown. Yes, yes, rates are higher, but there's still people out there just trying to, is going for it. They, they need to buy a home. They need to move. They, I mean, rents, I have friends paying 2200 bucks a month in rent, you know? And I'm like, why? Get it. You know, that, that's <coughs> a mortgage. It's more than a mortgage, right? <laughs> right, well, so it just depends on where you're going to live. You, live. you know that. You can right. live in Evanston. It's going to be expensive, yeah. but you can live in some yeah. parts of the city that are more affordable. And that's the way. You know, you just got to find the right area. There are suburbs that are still affordable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I say affordable, I'm saying anywhere from yeah. 350 yeah. to 450. The, two, the 275 to three and a quarter stuff's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it you, is. you know, it's just it's not that's just anymore. what it is now. Yeah. That's it the is. new norm. So, I got seniors out here looking at. Where am I going to go if I sell my home? What do you tell them? Well, I'm going to tell, tell you the truth. There's a lot of seniors right now are sitting on their homes mm -hmm. because it's kind, of, it's kind of where they're going. So if you're a senior, I, I would say you have to know where you're going because if you can't get out there and, and run and try to get a home or someone to, to do that for you, you tend to kind of, in fact, not tens really, but it's going to be a problem. So you, uh, if, if you're a senior and you're sitting in your home, be sure you know where you're going before you sell your home. Because someone will pick up your home in a heartbeat. And you, you I mean, no one can kick you out of your home, of course, because you know, if you have a, a great broker, they're not gonna do that. But I tell seniors, let's try to figure out where you're gonna go first. Okay. Before, you go, before you think about even selling your home. Because it can get to a point where you, you don't know where you're going. 
So again, I'm the 80-year-old individual who just sold my house for half a million dollars, bought it for 20,000 many years ago. Great. The question is, where do I go? I'm not looking to go buy another house anymore. Uh, can I go to the senior home or should I buy a condo? What are you recommending? Well, for a senior, I always, I always I prefer a condo. Less maintenance, you pay an assessment. And I've put um, many seniors into home where I would, I, I don't um, encourage seniors to buy homes. It takes too much work. And at that point, you know, you want to be able to just relax and, and, and you know, pay the assessment. Someone cleans the snow, mow the grass, and someone takes care of the, uh, you know, all the repairs. Okay. So if you're a senior and you're watching this film, a senior I, is a 90-year-old, okay? Okay. Uh, well, I, well, yeah, yeah. well, maybe 95. <laughs> maybe 95. <laughs> or, yeah. you know, even 100. We all want to live, so. Hey, the, ages, the ages have changed, so. Yeah, or so, whether uh, you want to go to another part of the country. Um, I've had, I've, I've, I've closed a couple of uh, seniors who decided to go out to California. Okay. They bought a home in California, and they just want to go and play golf. And I've, actually, I talked to one of them yesterday, and I asked them how they're doing. They sold, they sold their three flat and decided they want to go to California just not do anything again california rough place i'm going there next week i gotta buy tons of property out there but these prices are ridiculous i got this one beat up shack selling for a million five i'm like wait this beat and it's 800 square feet house for what i can't do this but i keep telling them i'm gonna come to east oakland i got the best value right now if you want to find a property east oakland is the place to buy but again it may be a little dangerous but I think you're going to have some danger no matter where you go. Now, the seniors I've sold, so they, I mean, they're, they're, they've done their, their time. So they, 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 they bought homes quite high in California. They've sold. It's all paid for here. They just took the money and just went ahead. And, and uh, they want to play golf every day. So if, you, if, you, if you're in that bracket, then I'm, I'm okay. I'm just go to California or right. Arizona or wherever you want to go in a part of the state. Sell the home and get out of here and, and do some... Um, you know, walk in the morning, don't matter, no snow. But I, I, want, to, I want to touch base with, um, with uh, to Peter on like multi-unit, just the, the advantages of multi-unit when it comes to the commercial side and um, how you get qualified. Because I, I want to, you know, I do quite a bit of commercial when it comes to multi-units. Okay. So I want to kind of, kind of get into that a little bit and maybe Peter can talk about qualification of multi-unit um, and what it takes to get that done. Well, as we said earlier, I'm going to be looking at the rent roll of the subject property and the expenses mm -hmm. to determine whether or not that building's a a good asset and with mm -hmm. cash flow to be to pay down the mortgage, right. pay down all the expenses, and still have some money left over for you in your pocket since you're mm -hmm. investing your money. I'll call it your management fee, right? Right. So if you're buying a property for nine hundred thousand and put let's just say for the conversation $400,000 down, I'm hoping that we can get you three to 5% or better on that cash mm -hmm. because you're now rolling up your sleeves and managing a property, being a landlord. So each deal will be on a case by case review to determine whether or not that's a good investment. Okay. You know, yeah. and I wanna, I wanna so say- um, it, So that it's just, it, it's all about numbers. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you're buying a building and the person's haven't raised the rent forever. And the tenants yeah. have been there forever. So in our industry, we'll call it a pro forma rent, knowing that Leroy can get 1750 instead of 1000 So we'll look at a deal like that too, just to determine whether or not that will generate the cash flow necessary Got to get the deal closed. Yeah, question. So the upside potential is there. We need to know, okay, yeah, the guy's got enough cash to wherewithal, right? Mm -hmm. Until he stabilizes the building and starts yeah. generating that type of rents and money. Are you money. seeing that much volume these days though in that marketplace? Because again, everybody wants to go own their building and get rents paid and you live forever. Actually, let's sir, you know, let me, let me say, because cause I'm, I'm the one that more faces that than Peter, but I, that, that's sort of a hot market. That, the, the, those multi-units, a very hot market. Okay. If you got a multi-unit to sell, I mean, it goes like that. Uh, I was just at one last week. I mean, yeah, it's, it was it's an open about house. Cash flow. And you're talking about number of people coming in. I mean, just coming in and looking at a property. Um, but what I do, I really, cons when it comes to multi-unit, I consult first before I do anything. 
because not everybody can be a landlord. So if people call me like at, at 773-764-9547, before they decide to get into that multi-unit, I literally sit down and figure out whether that, that person is a, would, would be a landlord. Because I've, I've consulted people and tell, tell them before not to get into multi-unit. They decide that I don't know what I'm talking about, and they turn around and lose their property mm. because of the fact that they feel like, no, I, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I, I'm like, you know. Why not. shouldn't a person buy the property? It's not the way why they shouldn't buy. I mean, your personality, I'll, I'll, if you have a, what, what, for me as, as a consultant, because I'm, I'm going to call myself a consultant first, mm -hmm. if I consult you and I realize you, you don't have the, whether or not you're too nice or you're, you don't have the tenacity back. or you don't have certain things, I'm going to let you know, listen, it's, maybe this is not the right thing for you to do because you don't want to put someone into a three, four hundred thousand dollars property and they turn around and lose it. I've seen it happen more than once and I've consulted against it and people said, well, no, no, you don't know. I, I want me a two flat. Yeah, it's a crazy thing. I put a client of mine into a 16 unit building that uh, guy was a factory worker, had never had to deal with tenants yeah. before, and he found himself almost every other month being in an eviction court because people don't want to pay their there rent. There you go. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, this is a property. You have tenants. You have to make sure you have the best tenants. And right now, you're losing money, and now you're going to lose the property because you could not do this, and you've lost all the money that you put in this property. I've seen people lo lose many properties yep. because they don't listen. Yeah. They, they, think, they think we don't want them to buy, but as a, as, as a good broker, you want to be able to consult people properly to say, this is good, this is not good. But some people just, they want to do because their friends do it. And I've seen them lose their property. I'm like, what can I do? I told you not to buy it. Yeah. I, see, I, I see people, I advise people in flipping, and I tell them not to do certain things. And they're like, no, no, I, I want my property so and so and so. And then I said, oh, you lost money, sorry. But as long as I give you good advice and you don't take that advice, then nothing I can do about it, all right? Yeah, we've done but, our job. But I've, as right. long as I've done my job, you know, then I feel good about it. But so I do consult before I, especially a two flat. I really want to know who you are because I don't want you to, to screw up. So, and that's why people right. hire like me, people hire uh, people like me to manage their property, all right? And that's why I'm a property manager because I realize there's some people who cannot handle their own property. Now, are you finding in two flat purchases that most of the two flat purchases are going to be live-in and tenants? Most of it, yeah. Okay, so yeah, at least like I'm buying a property, I get to live rent-free because I have somebody else paying me the rent, and I get my two flat, I go ride through the sunset. Well, I mean, I don't know about people, riding through the sunset. <laughs> not about riding through the sunset. Yeah, I mean, two flats in the north side of Chicago really went up pretty strong. Oh yeah. So you're going to be liable from the residential side. Let's say a mortgage is still four grand a month mm -hmm. right. with taxes and insurance. So the tenant's giving you two grand. You're still, but you have a place for two grand a month. Right. And so not so that's, much. That's okay. not so much it's rent free. Than paying rent. In some of these places, yeah. you got a garden apartment that you can rent to a family member right. yeah. that can help out. So, again, I always say it's on a case by case. Yeah. Every deal, every person's different. Everybody's financial picture is different. I, some people, you know, they could save money. You know, better than a guy to make, say a guy that makes forty grand a year. I've seen save thirty thousand. I got a guy that makes two hundred grand a year. and He's got two dollars. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, I mean, and that's true. I mean, it's that's all, literally you know, true. Everybody's different. It's a relative situation, but right <laughs> so, now, you guys have been around for a long time. Right. Right mm -hmm. now, you have some things that you see right now in the marketplace. And what are the things that you're seeing right now people need to get in their system and say, this is what you need to do today? And you're on the commercial side, you're on the residential side. What do you do on the commercial side today? Well, for my perspective, mm -hmm. Okay, that I, what I'm seeing a lot more lately, unfortunately, is a lot of people are racking up the credit cards. Okay, mm -hmm. and that and that's concerning. That. <laughs> that's concerning me. Yeah, and 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 it's also concerning the banks. Mm -hmm. That that's you know you know it's a higher rate. Right. Why are they paying that rate when they? So they're that's a concern, and I'm concerned. It's a valid concern, but when I do a loan, um, on a commercial side, they get a little 
cautious about lending if there's too much credit card debt out there. Got it. On the residential side of business, the only thing that I see that I'm seeing that's starting to impact people's ability are these student loans are starting to come due. Thank mm -hmm. God the, the administration has allowed them to like adjust them. Mm -hmm. So on a sixty thousand dollars instead of being six hundred dollars a month payment, it's I've seen some people get them reduced to like three hundred. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're taking the terms longer. I don't know all the details, but we're starting I'm starting to see that. But that's a concern too. The student loans are kicking in. Um, I I'm just seeing more credit card debt. So whether they're buying a house or a building I, I, I gotta I gotta I gotta watch my P's and Q's and try not to be a dad okay <laughs> yeah that's true so I'm just sharing with anybody who's listening the credit card is and this you, know, you know watch out what are you seeing on the residential side you know I, I think people are some some people are scared and I see people afraid of the interest rate okay and and a lot of times I got to coach them on that that it's okay back to affordability you can afford it, but people are like, well, you know, I don't want to buy yet. I'm not ready yet because of the fact that rates are high. Are rates going to come down? And they can go higher. They can go higher. Yeah. But but it comes back to what Peter was saying: affordability. Can you afford seven and a half percent or six point eight five or whatever? Yeah. And we so, can lock it in right now. But yeah. If you wait too long, it may not be available. That's what we're saying. People people are, are scared that rates are that they don't want to pick, and, and, that's and that's because of the new buyers over the past 20, 20 years or whatever, they have seen a three and a four and a 2% rate. Right. And so they're eight, seven and a half, they're like, what do you mean, what is this? Like, you know what's what going on here? I can't deal with this stuff. So that's sort of a, what the issue is. Okay. That's the issue is when it comes to what we're seeing, when it comes, what's, what I am seeing. So, um, and credit cards too. So what I've done, I've teamed up, I have teamed up with other organizations to help people to move that credit card to a lower, uh, not to a lower, but to try to get them to pay off Got that it. credit card. So I've teamed up with other, uh, I, I work with uh, uh, two non-for-profit organizations that will help them to say, okay, you know, let's try to get these off, these paid off. And I was, actually, I was talking to one of my clients two nights ago and referred them to the organization and say, we gotta get this all done before we move forward. Got it, it's a crazy world now. We came up with, start off, Great information. Right now, Peter, you got the floor saying, hey, I can give you money. You can get some from me and some from the Fed and the other side, and I can give you up to $8,000 to be a first-time home buyer. Is that still available? Yes, it's okay. still available. Uh, again, again, I'm looking at my watch. They, they changed it. It's good until, what, 4.30 today? <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's, it's, I think it's a very good program, and it's something they should call me about. Okay, and call you at what number? 312-415-0884. Okay, and that gets you in the door. First-time home buyer, we get you up to eight grand, and you can get in the door of your new home. That is correct. Okay, it sounds like a good deal to me. What about you, Leroy? What do we got going? Well, I, I want to I say it's important that uh, when you call me, uh, I, I do want to consult first because I want to make sure that I'm putting you into the proper home. And now, like Peter said earlier, you, you, you got to be careful you want to be a dad in that you want to say, well, don't do this, don't do that. But I, I want to put you in a proper home, uh, whether or not if you're a single mother with two kids and, you know, is a house good for you or a condo good for you or a town home or is it two flat? So I do want to just consult properly to know that when I put you in the, into that home, is that you will, you will, your survival skills in that home will be, will be 90 plus percent, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> and you always call me at 773-764-9547 or go to millsreal.com. Got it. We're talking about a marketplace that's rapidly changing, changes by the hour. No, let's go by the minute. And right now, we have a limited time period for you individuals as listeners to say, hey, get in the door and get this at least started so you can take advantage of the opportunities that are on the table. Right now, today, for this last hour, you've heard some information right now that people don't know about. Tell your friends, let them know it's available. Say, hey, I'm giving you a treat today. I'm gonna give you $8,000 for free. And again, as a friend, call this guy and you wanna buy that new home, it's available for you to get it out of the door today. 
And if you want to find a new home, call this guy, Leroy, and say he's given the number to say, hey, look, I got inventory here. I can find you a home. We can close tomorrow if you got the down payment <laughs> money, and we roll from there. So a scenario that's there, and Leroy will give you a little consultation to say, hey, look, this is what works best for people, has worked best over time. For the years that I've been involved in the industry, many tens of thousands of years, yeah. let's go 30 years, and yeah, yeah, we can yeah. get rolling and make this thing work for you. So that's what we wanted to do from this program today, to educate people and let them know that this is what works. Yes, uh, and, and, and I, I really appreciate you. Um, doing, doing this, and I appreciate um, you, Lester, for, um, for talking to us and getting the, getting the information out to, to the folks who need it the most. Yeah. Uh, there's programs out there. Guarantee Rate has great programs. Um, and and uh, Guarantee Rate, along with Mills Realty, you know, we, we try to team up and, and try to bring you, the, you know, really great programs. And, and, let's, and today, you've, you've give, you're giving away $8,000. And I will consult with, with anyone, and it doesn't cost you anything. We can consult, consult with you, and, and you know, if you guys want to take my advice, fine. I've been in the business a long time. I work the north side of the city and the south side of the city, and all the Chicago land suburb. So I do the entire gamut of uh, of this area. There are all 77 neighborhoods in Chicago, okay. and it's in the surrounding suburb. So I will consult uh, at no cost, just to make sure that you're getting the right. You're in the right home. Okay. The right home. Now, again, I didn't throw on the tape, but I do have the $1 homes down in St. Louis these days. I went down there, took the inventory. They'll give you a home in St. Louis for $1. Only problem is it's been vacated for the last three to five years. And right now, you have to go in and rehab. You have roughly 18 months to fix it up. I've priced yeah, these true. properties. It's a, I, wow. I took a look at it, by the way. Yeah, if they've been fixed up, values go up as high as a million dollars for these houses once you fix them up. So I go down to St. Louis and say, look, I'm deal, just give me the house. Talk to the city of St. Louis. They'll put you on the format. You go and do your inspection, get the actual plan. Get the Looking for